Refilling. It's clearly the key to unlocking the era of deep space exploration with Starship. However, it's also the factor that is causing a lot of doubt about SpaceX's system. Now, we all know that SpaceX will build it in the V3 version in 2026, but how will they do it? Everything has been officially revealed by SpaceX with more specific steps than ever before. So, let us find out about these details on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Refilling a vehicle in orbit is something that humanity has never Ever accomplished before. The difficulty of this task is something that everyone can feel and understand deeply. However, SpaceX is determined to overcome this challenge in order to take the Starship spacecraft further into space, including all the way to the moon. In the latest update from SpaceX, the company emphasized that on-orbit refilling enables Starship to complete the Artemis lunar mission architecture and carry up to 100 tons directly to the lunar surface. This capability provides the means to transport rovers, habitats, and other essential payloads that are needed to establish a permanent and sustainable presence on the moon. To put this into perspective, let's consider why orbital refilling is such a groundbreaking concept. Traditionally, spacecraft have had to carry all their fuel from the ground, which limits how far they can go and how much payload they can deliver. The Earth's gravity well is a massive hurdle, and launching with enough fuel for long journeys like the Moon or even Mars would require enormous rockets that are impractical to build. Orbital refilling solves this problem by allowing a spacecraft to launch with just enough fuel to reach orbit and then top up its tanks from tanker ships already in space. This approach is similar to how airplanes refuel in mid-air during long flights, but it's never been done in the vacuum of space with cryogenic propellants like liquid methane and oxygen. SpaceX's Starship is designed to make this a reality, and it could revolutionize space travel by making missions more efficient and cost-effective. And we all know that next year is when SpaceX will attempt to make this happen. Musk has confirmed that SpaceX SpaceX will conduct several refilling operations in 2026. This statement aligns with ongoing developments as the company pushes forward despite earlier ambitions to demonstrate it by the end of 2025 having shifted due to technical progress. So how exactly will they achieve this feat? SpaceX has outlined a clear path forward. The company stated that the next major flight milestones tied specifically to the HLS or Human Landing System will be a long duration flight test and the in-space propellant transfer flight test. These milestones are elements that space enthusiasts have been speculating about for some time. However, SpaceX has not provided detailed public explanations until recently. Now, the company has shared comprehensive insights into the process. Firstly, SpaceX will launch a Starship from their Starbase facility in Texas. This particular mission will be a long-duration one, as described by the company. During this test, the Starship will spend an extended period in orbit. The primary purpose of this test is to gather critical data on the vehicle's propulsion system and thermal behavior during an extended duration mission. This includes studying long duration propellant storage and characterizing the boil off rates of the cryogenic fuels. The ability of the vehicle and its fuel to endure a long mission is precisely what has raised doubts about the feasibility of the refilling system. Cryogenic fuels such as liquid oxygen and methane can evaporate completely if not properly managed, while the spacecraft itself might suffer from breakdowns or structural cracks due to extreme temperature fluctuations and external factors like space debris. No organization has ever demonstrated these capabilities in space before, especially on such a scale. However, for long duration missions, the fuel must be maintained in stable condition to ensure that the vehicle can still operate effectively. In the context of the refilling system, demonstrating these capabilities is also essential, especially if SpaceX decides to establish a fuel depot in orbit. Overall, this long-duration test will serve as an important step to prove that Starship can handle the rigors of extended space operations. To illustrate the complexity, consider the physics involved. In microgravity, liquids do not settle at the bottom of tanks like they do on Earth. Instead, they float around, which makes transferring them between vehicles challenging. 
SpaceX plans to use small thrusters to create a gentle acceleration, settling the propellants so they can be pumped accurately. This technique has been tested in simulations, but proving it in orbit will be a major milestone. After completing this initial step, SpaceX will proceed to a second mission. This mission will simulate in-space propellant transfer. It'll involve a rendezvous between two starships to demonstrate the ship-to-ship -ship fuel transfer directly in orbit. This is the flight that will prove the core technology of orbital refilling. In fact, it not only validates the ability to transfer fuel from one ship to another, but also lays the groundwork for building a fuel depot. In that scenario, a starship would need to locate the depot, dock with it, and then connect to receive the fuel. As for the connection mechanism, we can already form a clear picture based on the appearance of the first Starship V3 prototype, known as S-39, which was revealed recently. Observers have noted that SpaceX has incorporated two small connection points under the payload door area. These are likely the ports where the two vehicles will link up for fuel transfer. The presence of two tubes at this point is probably designed to allow for separate transfers of oxidizer and fuel, while also maintaining balance during the process to prevent any instability. SpaceX has provided even more detailed updates on this refueling system. Firstly, the company explained that the Starship V3 vehicles are equipped with docking ports that can be configured to function as tanker vehicles through the addition of docking probes. This indicates that a highly innovative system will be integrated into the new hardware in the near future. SpaceX will need to test the survivability of these components during actual flights to ensure reliability. Next, SpaceX mentioned that the Starship will feature an upgraded docking point, which is originally used for refilling on the ground. This point will be optimized further to make it suitable for transferring fuel in the challenging environment of orbit. Another key technology that plays a vital role in the refilling system is the Dragon Eye Sensor. SpaceX describes this navigation sensor as having extensive flight heritage, meaning it has a proven track record. It has been utilized for guiding the Dragon spacecraft during approaches to the ISS, and its capabilities have been demonstrated successfully many times over. With these efforts underway, SpaceX prioritizes stability in refilling development, focusing on reliable docking and fuel transfers. A successful initial demo would mark a pivotal space tech breakthrough, though the debut mission will stick to fundamentals tempering ambitions. These two inaugural missions launch refilling capabilities in 2026, hinging on V3 architecture flight tests, yet firmly targeted for that year. Early V3 missions are vital, validating design, orbital touchdown, payload deployment, and stage capture, likely slotting refilling tests around Flight 16 or beyond. Still, they're just the start. Dozens more refilling flights will hone reliability for operations, as Artemis lunar trips may demand over 10 tankers each. Early successes will simplify later ones through accumulated expertise. What do you think of SpaceX's 2026 refilling plan? Are you ready to witness this feat? If you're excited, let me know with ready down below. But wait, before we blast off into the future, let's fuel up on some inspiration from SpaceX's stellar track record. Beyond intense preparations and missions, SpaceX radiates unstoppable momentum with 49 conquered milestones, two spotlighting refilling advancements. First, they've activated a hardware in the loop test bed with flight representative hardware for propellant transfer simulations, indicating partial tanker prototypes integrated with developing Starship human landing system hardware for compatibility assessments though full integration awaits completed vehicles. Second, they've completed a depot power module demonstration, testing prototype electrical systems for the propellant depot Starship variant, unlocking orbital fuel depots alongside ship-to-ship -ship methods, and demanding rigorous testing for long-term space endurance. Related sensors, tested for Starship integration, employ radio frequency measurements to gauge propellant levels accurately in microgravity, as proven in recent flights, a detail seldom shared publicly. This progress is fueled by leaders like Musk and Shotwell's profound tech insight. This progress is fueled by leaders Elon Musk and Gwyn Shotwell's profound tech insight, framing refilling as akin to, and potentially simpler than, Dragon's flawless 100% successful ISS dockings with identical vehicles unlike interfacing disparate, unlike interfacing disparate platforms. 
Competitors' stumbles, such as Starliner's past docking failures and Cygnus's recent issues, underscore why only SpaceX exudes such confidence. What seems impossible to others is squarely within their mastery. But let's not get lost in the stars just yet. SpaceX still has a massive mountain of preparations to conquer for refilling success. As hammered home in updates, this isn't a one and done stunt. It'll demand a fleet of flights to ramp up full capability. That means churning out an army of prototypes, especially those tanker beasts, all primed and ready by the first half of 2026 for the epic missions on deck. SpaceX's manufacturing system will handle this production demand, with the Star Factory operating at full capacity, stacking bays ramping up, and the Giga Bay completed soon to enable final vehicle production, inspections, and refurbishments. Testing systems must expand and upgrade for seamless progression to launches where pads require orbital launch mount enhancement enhancements and flame trenches as seen on Pad 2. Currently, Kennedy Space Center's Pad LC-39A is installing these upgrades, while Starbase's Pad 1 dismantles outdated designs. Next year, about three active pads will support refilling development. By 2027, two more from Launch Complex 37 will join, accelerating the refilling system's buildup. Beyond internal efforts, external interest grows, with the Pentagon eyeing starships in space refueling for military uses like orbital fuel depots for extended missions, potentially fostering standardized interfaces that advance the entire space industry. We are standing on the brink of a miracle in space exploration. Refilling in orbit is an achievement that no one has accomplished before, and it remains a topic of significant skepticism. However, it's the key to unlocking long-duration missions that are crucial for the future of space exploration. With a specific and detailed plan now in place, SpaceX may be prepared to make this a reality as early as next year. As we look ahead, the excitement is palpable. SpaceX's bold vision, backed by rigorous testing and innovative engineering, positions them to achieve what was once thought impossible. The era of routine space travel is closer than ever, and orbital refilling is the linchpin. But in any case, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.